Goal setting and organizing spiritual priorities. And I'm going to move this sort of back, well, back away this way, just so you can kind of see some of the slides that, that I've prepared. I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be using them, and I'll speak them as well, so if you can't see them, but at least uh, you'll see some of the prompts that I put up here so you can kind of get an idea uh, where we're going. Uh, and so hopefully, uh, there's a quote that, that I thought was pretty apropos for, you know, starting a new year. Everybody talks about New Year's resolutions, and, and uh, this is what I'm going to do differently, and so on. Uh, but in, in truth, uh, you know, setting goals for your life, regardless of whether it's January 1 or October 2nd or wherever it is, is really an important part of our walk with God. So this isn't just, um, well, you know, setting goals is more for the secular world, but it doesn't work so much for the church. That's really not true. Um, and so uh, Tony Robbins made this statement, you know, he's a motivational guy a speaker, he said, how am I going to live today to create the tomorrow I've committed to? And so in other words, you know, how we live every day speaks to really what we believe we're going to become. So when you, when you think about living for God, if I don't have a plan and I'm not really focused on doing anything, I'm just kind of, you know, riding it out that really speaks to what I expect to get back in a sense. And so, so uh, it's important that as we approach 2024 uh, in our own lives and the worship place uh, as a corporate body, uh, that we focus in on, okay, God, this is, this is where I want to go. Uh, this, is, this is what I want to become. This is what I want you to become in me. And, and then we proceed very intentionally with, with our actions because they follow that. So I could show you, you know, there's some slides about, uh, you know, goal setting. I Honestly, you can go on all kinds of templates and find that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. I want to spend more time with the spiritual application of this, although I do believe this is part of it. Uh, there are some, you know, you can, you can set goals and put post-it notes on your refrigerator. Uh, here are some, some really important things that I think work with whatever you do, and that is you set a goal, and, and you make it an attainable goal. This is what I'm going to do. If it's prayer, uh, Sister Alicio talked about that Sunday. If, if I'm making a commitment to fast or whatever I'm doing, uh, then I need, to, I need to make a plan. I need to write it. I need to say, I'm going to do this. Rather than talking yourself out of it because I didn't do it last year. So <clears throat> you make a plan. You set a goal and then you make a plan. This is how I'm going to accomplish it. You get to work. You do something. And then you stick to it. Uh, I'm, I'm bad about this when it comes to things like weightlifting. I, I, I like to watch all these guys that go around who have, you know, the physique and that motivates me about two days. And then after that, I lose it, you know. But we still should have goals. And it, and it works in terms of living for God, a service to God, ministry in the church, whatever it is that I feel that God is, is opening a door or calling me to do, I want to do that. You reach the goal and then you celebrate. So there are different ways of looking at this. But I want to start out with, with this. I'm going to ask Brother Jonathan to come and... Um, just going to give you a chance to get up because honestly, uh, it doesn't do any good to set a goal if we don't do something. Um, for, us to, to, for us to be able to, to be successful, I think, in living for God, we got to do something. At some point, talking is just not good enough. So if you would, uh, Brother Jonathan, just I gave him this and asked him just to spread several of these out here. This is a unit or a denomination of U.S. currency. And uh, he's going to spread them out here on the front. And I'm just going to ask everyone to come up and just get one. I know I can trust you. I, Pastor, I thought no better way to start out than to give away a unit or a denomination. Uh, uh, so... Uh, but anyway, I'd like you just to, to come up here right now. Go ahead and just get one. He's spreading them out here. There should be enough for everybody in here. So just, just get one. 
one of these units just, yeah, yeah, I, that's fine. I, I'm, Brother Jim, I'm not watching that closely. Just, I, I'm going to dive off the platform. <laughs> Now just pick up one that feels good, doesn't it? Starting out this way. It's... Here you thought living for God was just about what you had to give. Uh, yeah, brother. I mean, uh, because this applies to your family. Yeah. So now that you have this, I want you to look at it. Just, just take a, a look at it and... And I want you to identify what's in your hand. I told you it's a unit or a denomination of U.S. currency. And I want you to think about what it is that you have in your hand. Anyone want to venture a guess? What is that? How much is it? Okay, it's one what? Okay, it's a dollar. So this, this little thing that you're doing right here really leads us into what I believe is the first step of setting a spiritual goal uh, or any goal, and that is visualization. Okay? So we're going to visualize something. That's what goal setting is. In other, words, what, in other words, what do you see? So I've got something up here that uh, this next slide is, a, is, says, these are the three things I think are critical for me spiritually, for us spiritually, church, corporate body, first of all, got to dream big. We spend a lot of time limiting ourselves. And so we don't, typically people don't think big because we're flesh and blood. So we don't think, so, you know, you dream big. I mean, Walt Disney big. You, you dream big. That's how we're supposed to think. Actually, as children of God, we're supposed to do, be doing that anyway. We don't call it dreaming. We call it faithing. But, but you dream big, and then you, the second thing you do is set goals, and the third one you can't see because it's in red. But it is take action. And those three things are absolutely essential. You dream big, you set some goals, and then you do something about it. Those three things are absolutely critical. And, and where it starts... What you've got in your hand is visualization. In other words, what are you visualizing for you individually, for your family, for your children? Where do you see your family going in the kingdom? Where do you see you going in the kingdom? And this is something that is not an exercise. It's a worthwhile endeavor. Because if I don't know where I'm going, then I won't know when I get there. Have you heard that? If you don't know where you're going, then you won't know when you get there. Okay? I've arrived. Well, I didn't plan anything, so I don't know. I'm just showing up. Well, God has more for us than that. So I want all of us to visualize what we see before us in 2024. What do you see? I want you to look at that currency again. What do you see? Because this is something that we cannot do Um, as a group. This is not a group exercise. This is the hard work of walking with God, and that is having a real conversation with ourselves and saying, all right, what what am I going to do? Where where are we going to go now for the next 360 to three days? How's this going to how's this going to happen? How am I going to grow? So, I want to start out with a general premise in all of that, and that is every one of us are children of Abraham and that's significant because I'm going to use him as an example of of one of the best goal setters and visualizers in God's word. But I think we have to understand that all of us are children of Abraham. I'm not talking about your your DNA. I'm talking about um uh, we're children, but we got it a different way. Galatians 3, 7, uh, 9, and 29. They'll show this. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are children of Abraham. So if you're of faith, then technically, whose lineage do you come from? Abraham. So then they which be of faith are blessed. Everybody say, I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. And if ye be Christ, how many are of Christ? 
then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So I've always told my family, my kids this, you are a child of Abraham, so every blessing God gave him belongs to you. So I'm not just reading when I read in Genesis about the history of the Abrahamic covenant. I'm reading about my lineage that belongs to me. Okay? So, so that's kind of where we start in terms of the premise. Now, I want you to look at this verse of Scripture. This is Genesis 13. Now we're going to we're gonna look at how you visualize. Because if I can't visualize things properly, then I'm going to struggle 2024 the way I did in 2023. It does us no good to see the same things that we saw in 2023 and 2024. Just project them from one year to the next. That doesn't help us grow. So the Lord said to Abram after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are. Don't look at, in other words, he said, look from where you are. Northward, where's north? Northward, southward, east, and westward for all the land that you what? So if I'm not, if my head's not up and I'm not looking around, guess what? This doesn't apply to me. So in other words, he says, for all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. Wherever you look, 360 degrees. Once again, if I'm doing this all the time, no wonder I don't feel blessed. I'm not going anywhere. He said, from where you are, I want you to look out north. South, east, and west, and wherever you see out there, I'm going to give it to you. This is the key to visualization. I cannot stay where I have been. The the key to this is I'm going to look beyond where I have been, and I'm going to look big because I'm a child of Abraham, and that belongs to me. It's rightfully mine. Now, Genesis 15, 5. And he brought him outside and said, look toward the heaven. Abraham was so great at visualization. He tells him to look toward the heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. You can't. You know you can't. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham does something very strange here. God never promised him the heavens. He said, count the stars, and if you can number them, that's how many offspring you will have. But Abraham believed so much in God. If God, you tell me I'm going to look at the land out there, north, south, east, west, then I'm not going to stop at star counting. This is the key to visualization. Let me show you something. First of all, it continues, Genesis 15, 6. And he believed God. See, I mean, Abram did not put boundaries around God. Okay, you said it. He believed God, and God counted it to him as righteousness. Genesis 15, 6. So Abraham not only saw himself taking possession of the land around him, he visualized this, but he also saw himself possessing the heavens. Not just the number of kids, but the God who made the stars and the heavens also owns them. I want some of that too. (laughs) Hebrews 11.10, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. I want the heavens. God, I want the spiritual. I just don't want uh, I just don't want a city. I've been going from tent to tent. Yeah, a city would be good, but I want something that God makes. I want something bigger than the tangible. So if 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 we want God to do something incredible, we have to visualize the incredible that comes from an incredible God. 
We can't, we can't visualize the same way we've been doing it. This is thinking outside of ourselves. That's how big God is. See, Abraham was emulating the disposition of God. Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I've made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. So Abraham was doing what God, that was part of his character, and that is, I'm going to call into existence things that nobody sees, but I do. I visualize it. I see it. So my question to you tonight is, now look at what you had and what you got. What do you see? Not reality. What do you see? Let's just assume for a second that God gave that to you. What do you see? Do we only see the things that our optic nerve tells our brain is there? Or do we, because Abraham is our father, understand that we have an inheritance through him that allows us to visualize things that go way beyond what everybody else sees? So now look at that, and I want you to think about your situation and what the needs are in your household, and I want you to look at that, and I want you to yourself right now, call it what that is in your hand. Well, some of you probably don't need anything. You're wealthy. But the rest of us could use a miracle now and again. And when I see something in my hand, I need to be seeing more than what my eyes tell me is there. Because I'm a child of Abraham. We need to stop lowering ourselves to the level of the world around us. God's given us eyes to see who he is and what he can do. I've heard pastors say, stop talking about what other people say who you are and what you can do and what you can't do. My God, look at what's in your hand. How big is your God? God can speak for himself. He doesn't need some negative Nancy out there telling me about me. He can speak for himself. He's got the, I've, I've got the word. I understand it. Now, If we don't reach our spiritual potential, then it's probably because we couldn't see through our reality. You know, every once in a while, the devil comes along with a bag full of reality. It's almost like a trash bag full of reality. And I'm walking around feeling good, great sermons, enjoying church, having a great time. Trust in God. I've, I, I've, I've got a miracle I need from God, and here comes the devil. And the devil's got a whole bag full of reality. I got reality all around me. He gives me a whole bag of reality. And now I'm starting to get discouraged. Because, see, now the devil has shown me the real stuff. This is my reality. God, it's just a bunch of trash. I'm doing the best I can just to get to church. And and God, I've got so much reality. I just don't know if I can believe you for the headache I got, much less this great physical miracle that I need or this incredible spiritual or this soul restoration or my family member. Because God, I've just got too much reality. Honey, the devil, let me just tell you what I know about the devil If he can shut your eyes down, that's the heart of our whole, the core, the locus of our faith is is what we see and what we can visualize. And if you're not careful, your faith will get buried beneath your reality. We're not living for someone to tell us what our reality is. I want to know what's above and beyond what I see. I need to see a God who's bigger than what everybody else sees. Now, I'm not saying you say, well, you you know, you got... We got these little $1 bills, and we got, and I got all kinds of needs and so on. Well, how about this? 
maybe God can turn what's in your hand to 10,000 of those. 5,000, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 20,000 times. Let me ask you this. If he did that, would you give him a tenth of that? Because I have a feeling God's going to do that. And there are going to be some people that are going to remember this. They're going to be in the right frame of mind and they're going to come back. They're going to they're remember that verse of scripture. It's in Malachi, the third chapter. Bring all the tithes into the storehouses. And prove me. And see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. And I'll destroy the devourer on your behalf. Now, if there's somebody in here, if, if you're one of these folks that say, Brother Taggett, if you're saying this, you're saying that, that if, if I have a need and, and that I'm presenting this before God and say, God, I'm going to believe you right now for, for a financial miracle, do you believe it? I wholeheartedly believe it. And let me tell you how it's going to come to pass. First of all, you make the commitment that when that happens, you're going to bring at least a tenth to the house of God and pay your tithe. And if you'll commit to do that right now, I promise you God will, will do exactly what he said he would do. Given it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's the law. That's like gravity to God. You give to me and I'll give back to you. God wants to do that. we got to visualize though. we got to visualize it. i got to see it. There was no unbelief that made, that made Abraham waver. Romans 4.20, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his visualization, in his faith, as he gave glory to God. Fully convinced. Everybody say, I'm convinced. If you believe it, I want you to hold this up and say, I'm convinced. You see, we understand giving with money, but there's a whole lot more to giving than money. I'm going to get into the second part of this in just a second. But there's a whole lot more. But I knew that, that this would be relatable. Because it is to me. He was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Now let me just tell you this. What kills visualization is self-deprecation. Self-deprecating thoughts and behaviors. And we almost act, when you do this, what this means is, I'm down on myself. And all I can speak is criticism, negativism, and how bad I've got it. What you are saying, in essence, is you are not a child of Abraham. Now, I understand we all go through discouragement and so on. We need to be reinforced, and that's true. But at the end of the day, you just remember, when it seems like all hell is broken loose and been dumped on you, you remember, I'm a child of Abraham. I'm a child. I'm a seed of Abraham because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God, I'm a possessor. Uh, I'm not the tail. I'm the head. Uh, God, you have made me a conqueror. I'm more than one. Don't stand around in your reality in the trash of the reality. Get out and give God praise because you know he's got more for you. God's got more for every one of us. Why would I want 2023? I'm through with that. My God, I want the blessings of God, abundance of God in 2024. I don't want to go back there. Self-deprecating thoughts and behavior. We have a need to protect ourselves against failure. I understand that. We do. Every one of us do. We, we are very hesitant to step out and do anything that's a change, even if it's a change of worship. You hear that a lot around here. You know, I don't, well, I don't have a particular dance, so I don't dance in the spirit, whatever. Dancing in the spirit is as much in the flesh as it is in the spirit. Because your body's got to move. And a lot of people who dance do so when they're actually right in the middle of this. 
the best time to stomp the devil is to do this right in the middle of your reality. I am not going to put up with this anymore. I know who I am. I know who I belong to. And I know that I'm a possessor. And God, you're going to turn what the devil intended as a curse into a blessing. I'm believing for my healing. I'm believing for a miracle. I'm believing God's going to turn it around. I'm believing for my family, for my children. As long as all of that trash controls me emotionally, you'll keep seeing it coming. You know, a lot of people who act like they're just full of the joy of the Lord and they are, they got probably more of that than you do. They've just chosen to ignore it and to focus on the goodness of God. But we have a need to be protected from failure. But let me tell you something. you got to balance that with, being, with, with having trust in God. So in other words, do you have the dollar or do you have 10? Do you have 100? Do you have 1,000? Do you have 10,000? 100,000? Okay, well, now you're, being, now you're going too far. Okay, whatever. Whatever. What do you want God to do for you? Whatever. If you're willing to step out and to go beyond where your mind has been before, the devil digs trenches in our minds, and he would rather us stay in them. Got to get out of the trench and say, you know what? Child of Abraham. All right, the second thing you got to do uh, outside, the second thing, once you've done the visualization, now you've got to walk on what you've seen. Remember, I can't conquer where I haven't been. Let me say it a different way. I can't conquer where I haven't been in prayer, in faith, in worship, in giving, in service, in ministry. Let me say something about around the house of God. Let me tell you something. What we give is not just money. It's of ourselves. Pastor, what can I do? I want to give a little more time for the church this year. I want to do a little bit more service this year. I want to, I want to, I want to give to God a little bit more. Not just money. But in other words, after I visualize what, what I know that God has for me, now I've got to be willing to walk, take action. Remember, you dream big, but you can't stop there. You've got to take some action. What's your action going to be? This is what God told Abraham, Genesis 13, 17. Arise. Arise. What do you do when you get up? Arise. Get up every morning, every Wednesday. Every Sunday, arise. Now walk. Walk in faith. Walk in worship. Walk in prayer. Walk on this 21-day fast. Walk on a Daniel's fast. God, I don't understand. It's really not. I doesn't seem to be doing any good, but I'm going to do it. I'm just, you said to walk, and I'm going to walk. Walk on. Walk on. By faith. Walk on. He said, arise, walk the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. Later on, you know what he tells Joshua? Every place where your foot steps, I'll give it to you. But if I ain't stepping nowhere, I get nowhere. And so 2024, you know what the call is? Don't just see it, but put legs on it. Now, let me go back to the dollar. Here's how this works. Put legs on it. Guess what? This month, give a little bit more in offering. Give a little bit more in tithes. God, I want your blessing. Then he says, then I want your commitment. What are you going to do? God, I need you to turn this, this one talent into a miracle for me. And you know what the Lord's saying? Give me a little bit more worship. Give me a little bit more praise. Give me a little bit more of yourself. And I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Don't give like you did in 2023. Make 2024 a stellar year of giving. God, giving of my time, of my finance, of my effort, of my mind, of my passion to you. He says, arise, get up and walk. 
It says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread. That was Joshua. He said, just as I promised to Moses. Now he takes the promise to Abraham and he tells the successive generations. He says, this is what that means. Get up. During song service, worship, get up. Do something you hadn't done before. Get out in the aisle. Well, I'm not an aisle runner. Don't run them then. Stand up and stand in them. Just stand there. Just move around a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is, I purposed in my heart, God, I need a miracle, but I'm going to give you more of me. And when I do that, you said give, and it shall be given unto you. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to give you more than you can hold. How many could stand a blessing like that from God to where you actually can't take it anymore? I can't take anymore. God, I can't. Have you ever said that in prayer? God, I can't, I can't take. Yeah, I have. The trials and the test. Wouldn't it be nice to say that in terms of the blessings? God, please spare me no more. I, I can't take. I can't. No, no more. God, no more revival. I'm worn out. No more souls being filled with the Holy Ghost. We're just at capacity. We can't handle it. God, no more. Hey, can you get to that point? He said, I will bring you there. What do you see? I just want to say something about talk and negativism. You know, it really doesn't help. The devil gets too much of our reality. Sometimes we talk too much of that stuff. This is just me. I'll just, if this applies to you, if it doesn't, fine. You're probably perpetually positive. God bless you for that. But the truth is, we need to stop ourselves from speaking into existence things that should not be coming to fruition. I don't know. I just don't think. Stop. God, don't speak it into existence. I just don't know if. Don't even say it. Stop right there. We will only possess where we've been willing to walk. If we stay in the familiar, that's all we'll get. If we're willing to step out and walk into the uncomfortable, the unfamiliar, that which used to cause me anxiety... In other words, stay in the boat, that's familiar. But now the Lord's calling us in 2024, now step out into the realm of the unfamiliar, the unknown, the uncomfortable. In other words, walk on the water a little bit with me. Let me show you how big I really am. The Lord wants to give us new territory. Visualize it and then walk on it and claim it. Many times the need for perfection keeps us from forward progress. I want to be perfect. If I do it, I want to do it right. I'm that way too. But the truth of the matter is that belies the Holy Ghost ability to grow us. That really cancels out growing grace and in the knowledge of God because I'm not perfect. Well, then that means the Holy Ghost can't grow you. I mean, better to be good and fail than perfect and never do anything. And no one ever know it. I'm waiting to be perfect. My God, look at how many people could have been blessed with just a good word or a good testimony. Or some good worship. I'm just doing okay, but I'm still reading the word. Okay's good then, do something. God, I spoke something into existence and it still hadn't happened. I feel like a fool. Good, you did something. There's nothing that you speak into existence that God won't honor. If it's according to His promise and His word, we don't speak it enough because of fear of failure. Maybe that doesn't apply to you, it does to me. Theodore Roosevelt said, far better is it to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy nor suffer much because they live in a gray twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. I didn't venture anything. 
I just stayed here in my little reality. God wanted to show himself strong. But I couldn't get out of my own self. Either because of fear, unbelief. And see, you can't do this for me. I got to do this for me. This fast is a great way to do it. Make yourself. Nobody's going to call you and say, did you eat? Did you drink Coke today? You said you were going to do water. That's between you and me and God. But we're forcing ourselves to give more of ourself because we know we belong to God and also we're blessed as a child of Abraham through the Lord Jesus Christ and all of those blessings are mine. I'm a possessor and I intend in 2024 to act like one. How about you? Okay, we're all, at, we're all at different levels. Some of you are way ahead of me. You just wait, I'll catch up. But I'm not trying to catch up to you, I'm trying to catch up to him. Don't compare yourself to people. That's an exercise and a waste. It's just waste. There's Malachi 3.10. We got to walk blessed. Don't just visualize it, walk it. Walk blessed. I'm blessed. How are you? I'm blessed. God's good. God's good. If I don't have anything else to say, God's good. I'm going to walk blessed. I'm going to talk blessed. I'm going to give a little more of myself in January. In February, February, I'm going to up the ante just a little bit. In March, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. This is just between us. Have a goal for every month. I'm going to go a little deeper every month. There's given, it shall be given to you. Now, so I want to give you something else. And I want everyone to come up. These are just examples. They have no particular weight. By the way, the currency is yours. If you would, just come on up. And then you can just stay up here. Because I'm, if you could spread those out just a little bit. Take a couple of these. I want you to look at it. And think about what you see. You can, however you want to do your, now th this is just to make a, make a point, make another point. What am I going to do in 2024? I'm going to visualize what God has for me, and then I'm going to put legs on it. I'm going to walk on it. Look at this and tell me what you see. Just think about it. Think about it. What do you see? I want you to read it and then think about what you see. And I want to tell you what I see. I thought about this, and I thought about the hurting world that we live in. And people, at least people that I have been around, are longing for something that can heal their soul. They want something that can mollify the hurt. There's a lot of raw edges in people. And you know what? They don't have to tell anybody. But through the Holy Ghost, we should see it and know it exists because we've all had it. Every one of us, those raw places that hurt. What I see here is I see a person on the other end of this. Who I don't maybe have a great connection with or even know. But an opportunity for me to say, you know what? I just want to remind you that God loves you. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. There is nothing we will ever say that will change a heart that God's word won't do itself. And this is God's word. I see this as an opportunity for this to be an extension of my heart to someone else and for me to say, let me give you a word. God gave me a word for you. 
Huh? However you want to do that, get a church card, whatever you want to do, I'm telling you now, if you would if you would take something, a church card or whatever, and just to extend ourselves just a tad. You're not asking, God's not asking us to be an orator, but could you give something to somebody? Here, God loves you. Well, why are you giving it to me? I don't know, I use it myself. I carry it around with me. I thought you might like it. Right? So right now, in terms of what God wants to do for us individually, not just in our own household. The money was an example. But God wants us to visualize what's going to happen in this church in 2024 as it relates to us and through us. The question tonight is, what can we visualize individually? In terms of your own health and well-being and in terms of those who are around you, what does God want to do? If you would just take a moment and let's pray and let's ask God to open our eyes to things that we have not seen and show us what he wants to do for us individually. Because I'm telling you, folks, the sky's the limit what God wants to do with you and through us. But we've got to get out of where we've been and we've got to get out of the reality. Would you just raise your voice right now and just talk to the Lord just a moment? God, I'm going to dedicate my finance to you, my time to you in 2024. I see, God, things that are greater and more wonderful than I could ever imagine. And because I'm a child of Abraham, God, I know those things belong to me. I'm a possessor of those. God, open my eyes so I can see how marvelous what things you have for me, for my family, for my children. Thank you, Brother Tackett. What an awesome word. Hallelujah. 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 Can you see it? Can you see something? Can you see a future? He said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future. <laughs> you know people who commit suicide lose sight of their future. Young people that end up in crime, that get out there and shoot somebody or kill somebody, they, don't, they gave up on their future. God is in the future business. I want you to lift your hand. Thank you, Brother Tate. You have brought us a great word from God, and he's the last all year long. Praise God. And if you don't need the dollar, I think he could probably use 50 bucks or so, so, you know, you bring it back. <laughs> he won't say that, but I will. But, uh, but listen, see yourself having a future with God. And let me say, somebody you know and love has given up on their future. And you need to be the voice that tells them, through God, they have a future. If we give people a future, there won't be enough room in this church for the people that come for the help and hope that they need. Let's ask God right now. Precious God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to re I want to reconnect with my future, Lord. And I want to give somebody a future and a hope. In the mighty name of Jesus, send us into 2024 looking for candidates who need a future. Thank you, Jesus. Use us, O oh God, as instruments, as tools, as seeds to bring life. In Jesus' mighty name, we've heard a great word. Let us let that word get buried in our hearts and let it grow into fruition and great fruit in this coming year. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. Pray. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And